So that's not really the building you're looking at straight ahead, is it? It's over there. Oh, okay. That's a tree, and then this is the awning. Oh, there. I see. Okay. And the trees here. I've, I've uh, done a little landscape changing because I've shortened. Well, that's the they do that in motion pictures too. Oh, I bet they do. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? You know, um, after I actually retired, so about twenty years. try to paint every day that's wonderful yeah so that's what that makes a big difference you know doing, what did you do when you were working uh, computer software okay so yeah. this is different than that the other side of the brain <laughs> although you know programming is very creative it is creative yeah. very creative yeah. yes so what about you what's your profession well i was a lawyer oh. for 40 years oh my. now i have a, a travel channel gary's travel Maybe that's more and expensive. i'm doing video blogs oh okay i do, I do blogs of uh, France. I specialize in Ireland because I'm three quarters Irish. There you go. And That's I have a whole lot more fun. I bet than it, actually, in some ways, uh, Ireland is nicer than this, and in some ways, it's not. In Ireland, the, it rains. You can count on rain two or three times a day oh my God. for brief periods of time. Oh Here, yes. people come for two things: the Gulf of Mexico, and you can really usually get guaranteed good weather that's true this this winter has been uh unusual cool yeah it's very unusual that's how the earth reacts you know that it's that coolness yeah. is really global warming it may not seem that way to you you're saying gee how can it be cool if we have global warming but that's how the uh, earth fights back my mother was an art teacher and she painted too oh, did she? yes this is oil i can tell she did. Uh, she did a lot, mostly watercolors. You know, I started off with watercolor, and I absolutely love it. The problem that I had was people didn't. You know, you have to glass it, mat it, and frame it. Mm -hmm. And especially down here, people have um, big windows with lots of light, and the glass reflects. And if you get the museum glass. It kind of dulls the painting. Right, protect it. So, you know, it never was satisfactory. So I finally just bit the bullet and um, decided to... I would say you've probably been successful in selling some of these. I have, yeah. May I ask your name? Sure, Laura Buxo. What? Laura Buxo? Buxo, yeah. How would you spell that? B-U-X-O. Buxo, it okay. It was probably Buxo back uh, in, the, you know, before... You American must be partially I, French, I guess, right? French. Name, yeah. I once had an expert witness that I was taking to a deposition. He was of French descent. Oh. He had never been to France. <laughs> he went to France once, and it was just like going to any other new city. Sure. Then he went to the old part of France that was two or three hundred years old. Suddenly he knew shortcuts. He felt at home. Oh. He felt he had been there before. Maybe he had. And he probably had. <laughs> that makes yeah. me think that there might be something like life after death. Yeah, there's, there's becoming some evidence. You know? I'd say, and I think that we're going to find out uh, probably within the next 25 years because the uh, chat, chat GPT is just the first start of AI. And yeah. AI will soon be smarter than us. Yeah, and and they, 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 they can absorb and analyze all the data that was ever written or published in microseconds. You know, so this, we, this thing right here has more computing power than I started with when I was just out of school. That thing right there has more computing power than the computers that well, the astronauts used when they went to the moon. I know. <laughs> See, and, and they're a lot smarter than me because I can't figure out how to... I take it, well, that looks like a nice iPhone that you have there. Is that it, nice? It's a... It's a Samsung? Yeah, Samsung. Yeah, I have the, I have the yeah. iPhone 15 because of the videoing I do. Oh, okay. It's a brand, brand new one. Oh. They're up to $1,700 now. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, you can write that off. I can. <laughs> Being the lawyer that you are, you know probably know all the I've, I've lived a deductible life, but don't, I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know why I got into this? Because... Uh, 
Ezekiel Emanuel, I don't know if you've heard of him. That's the famous Emanuel family. Rahm Emanuel worked oh, yeah, for, yeah. and it's, it's, it's in Chicago, and then that, that's where they're from. Ezekiel's the brother who's the doctor, and he's teaching currently at the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, he said, when you're 70, you should probably do something like learn Chinese. Because, because your brain. Because you're creating brand new synapses in your yeah. brain and you're keeping your brain young. And if you just sit back and get in a soft chair and watch TV, you're yeah. going to die. Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing was, and you probably experienced this too, you know, by the time you retired, you are pretty good at what you did. Yeah. You know? And not that I knew everything, because I didn't. But, you know, I was pretty comfortable that if I didn't know... Um, something I knew how to figure it out or where to get the information and you know so life was fairly easy when I started this I this started was hard the right bottom. oh my gosh but it was kind of exhilarating because you can you know you're like you said you're learning you stuff. make mistakes and with each yeah. mistake you try to improve and that you're by normal human nature and growth you can get better and better and make less mistakes next time yeah. My first videos that I published were horrible. Now they get better and better. I yeah. know what the people like. But don't you, don't you feel kind of like you succeeded with something when you... you know, when it you was challenging. It still is challenging. challenging. It's brand new. I don't know. I, I, it's not so... You know, one of the reasons I got out of law was I was saying the same thing to the same people basically every day. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, they call me and they're the same problems... Right. Then I found myself, I was a trial lawyer, a personal injury trial lawyer. So I, I picked a lot of juries. Yeah. I found myself picking a jury once, and I said, my client has sustained very serious injuries. He sustained a uh, cervical sprain, and I found myself starting to laugh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I said, you know, time to get out. I don't think I'm taking this seriously enough. Yeah. Uh, so I decided that was that was the time to think about doing something different. Well, don't you have to be a little bit jaded just to deal with some of these people? Uh, it's. I'm glad I'm out now. It's gotten worse. I got out really because of people like you, computers. We used to go to court and we'd talk to the judges. We'd have coffee with all our friends, and we'd have meetings with lawyers. I can remember back in the good old days, the judge would put his feet up on his desk light a big cigar, all the lawyers took out cigarettes, were smoking in the chambers of the judge's office. You're like, what do you want to do? And, and they'd talk and work things out. Now it's Zoom meetings and... Well, you know, after, after COVID, I mean, we used to, I was never in the office. I did, uh, you know, a lot of sales. And uh, so, you know, we went around the world and sold and supported and all that. Right. And now, like you said, on new meetings and you're like, isn't that fun? No. It was fun. It was fun. Right. Not to mention, back in the old days, men and women worked together and you had a lot of fun. You had fun. You had fun. You teased each other. Now everyone's just afraid to say the wrong thing. Well, towards, <clears throat> towards the end of my career, I had, you know, young women working for me. It was mostly men that uh, that I always dealt with. So you always had, like, you know, you talked to men, you know? Right. And the young women that came out, they were looking for harassment. Right. They they were convinced that every man was going to harass them. Right. It was like, it's just, it was horrible. Things have changed. It was horrible. It was like no fun at all. You couldn't. You couldn't have fun with the guys. Cause Can't the guys tease and fool around anymore. No. Or the first thing they say is HR, HR, HR. Yeah. Right, yeah. That was, uh, that was the That takes so the, a lot of the fun out of it, doesn't it? It did, because, you know, when we were all working together, we were all, you know, we were young and crazy and, you know, went to cars all the time. Right, right, right. You know, all this stuff. And then, you know, after all that, I've talked to people after COVID, and that's that's a whole different. That's what changed things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the whole um, harassment issues, um, COVID. 
Well, uh, are you familiar with the television show Mad Men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you watch the whole thing or no, watch some? I haven't watched the whole thing, no. I, wa I watched the whole thing. I liked it because it brought me, because I was from that era. Yeah. Not, not me, my parents were. Yeah. Uh, like I can remember one scene where they're taking out garbage and there was paper supermarket bags with the bacon grease leaking through the garbage. Oh. You know, that hasn't happened with plastic bags, right? Well, you know. Uh, and the, and the, 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 the star of Mad Men uh, would uh, start drinking at 9 o'clock in the morning as he tried to seduce his secretary, which is an exaggeration. Hollywood, yeah, Hollywood yeah. is exaggerating, but things were different in those days. Oh, they were. It was okay to have a couple martinis at lunch. Yeah, I remember, I remember guys that I worked with when I was, you know, just starting out. They would go and um, have a few martinis, and then they would close their office door after lunch. For a while. <laughs> go to sleep on the yeah, couch. Yeah, nap. So it was. Uh, then they go home and have another cocktail with their wife at five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we go we go across to the bar. Um, well, thing, things have changed. My sister, I keep telling her she's a female chauvinist, uh, but because like all of her doctors are women, all of the lawyers that she goes to are women, she only deals with women. Uh, and when I started law school, which was in 1968, uh, when you, if you said, what's a, who's a lawyer, a lawyer usually met a man. Oh yeah. Who's a doctor, a, law, a doctor usually met a man. Who's a judge? Judge usually met a man. In my law school class, out of 160 men, there were four women. One wow. quit the first week. Uh, so there weren't a lot of women going into that profession. Now, right. in law school, it's more than 50%. Oh, is it really? Judges are more than 50% women. Really? Doctors are more than 50% women. Oh, I didn't know. So as I tell my sister all the time, you guys in the last 50 years have really made some great gains. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. Your team is winning now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, for doctors, for women, I would much rather go to a woman doctor. Just, That's you know. okay. Yeah, I, I think women, uh, I found as the number of female attorneys grew, they, they, they're they different than men they're in that they, they're more detail-oriented, they research more carefully, they're more yeah. careful with what they say, they're more prepared. They're more dangerous, basically. They're harder to deal with. You know, lawyers were like good old boys, you know. Well, and, but well, you know, you, when you started, I know when I started out, it was all men. And what you had to do is you had to work harder, you know, because you weren't starting on an equal plane. You're right. So you had to work harder. And maybe that's what ha that's what's happened. The women yeah. work, tend to work harder. And, you know, how long does it take before? That's beautiful. How long does it take before management realizes that, that women are willing to work harder? Well, you know, it depends because there was, I mean, there was always the issue of the, the like you said, the good old boy network, right? Right. There's always the good old boy network. And, and to a degree, I, I understand that because when I took over organizations, I wanted people I could trust. Of course. You know, and so that was, that was part of the whole thing too because, you know, you don't know many women that are doing that job, so who are, how are you gonna how are you gonna pick one? Now it's getting warm. Is that the tree that you're painting? We're this using it. Right here. This one right here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing that. That's an unusual tree. The leaf. It's not a palm tree. The leaves are unusual. Well, it's, 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 it's sort of a deciduous tree. It's a, um, a Pontiana tree. Pontiana. In the in the summer, in the heat of the summer, they have bright orange flowers. They're absolutely. I good. should remember because I used to go to that shop. I knew the owner. It's probably he's probably no longer there, uh, but I uh, used to go there all the time. Matter of fact, there's a woman who had a real estate brokerage right next door, Gudrun Todd. Oh, okay. And she lives in Naples, I believe, still. But she was. Uh, I don't know if she's still around or not. But. Well, it was very nice talking nice to you. Nice talking to you. And you'll soon be a star on YouTube. Oh, boy, I can't wait. <laughs> and is there any way that people can get in touch with you? Do you have an email address? LauraBuxo.com. LauraBuxo.com. Okay, yeah. Laura, very nice meeting nice you. Nice meeting Have you. a nice Good day. Bye-bye. Hi.
video fans. My name is Gary from Gary's Tours. I thought it might be fun to uh, rent a Tesla from Hertz on a Florida adventure that I'm doing now in Naples. This is my hotel. And one of the first things you're gonna do when you rent your Kia is try to figure out how to open it. Since it doesn't use keys and there's really an unusual way to open it. So in this quick video, we're going to analyze how you open it. Before I, but before I do that, I want to tell you how thrilled I am with this car. This car has the acceleration of a motorcycle. Uh, I think police should use the chase speeders. When you push the pedal to the floor, it instantly speeds up. You can go from probably, because I tested it a little bit, not to admit anything, uh, but I, you, if you floor the vehicle from zero, it'll go to zero to 100 in six, six seconds. It's the fastest car I've ever been in in my life. And there's no sound to it. It's not like a Corvette. You expect the Corvette to be fast. But this is a great car. It rides, I used to drive Mercedes Benz's all the time. Uh, now it has, the seat in this car is almost as good as the seat in the Mercedes. Now, when you want to open the car to get started with it, the first thing you do is you take the key that you receive. See that little spot on the, on the, uh, support bar between the front and rear window. Take your key, touch it to that spot, and then voila. All right, now in this first video about the Tesla, we're gonna talk about how to open the Tesla. That's the first thing you wanna do once you rent it. See this little spot on the support panel between the front and rear window? Tap on that with your key. You hear the horn teep beep, and voila, the car opens. As I say, this is the fastest car I've ever been in. I tested it, it'll do zero to 106 seconds. It's an unbelievably fast car. It's big enough for my purposes. And in future videos, we're gonna talk about how to charge it, which is also an interesting factor and uh, one that you'll find exciting as well. Thank you, enjoy the video, and good luck renting a Tesla. Okay, this is the second Tesla video we're going to do. This shows the Tesla screen. You can get to the screen by punching the little icon that says uh, car at the bottom left corner of the screen. And that will t then when you get the car, you select charging. This is how you're going to refill your car and charge it. You'll see that we have 71, we're 71 percent fully charged, and we're now at we backed into a charging facility that has 32 amperage of coverage of power, 32, which is a lot, and we, it'll charge relatively fast. So now, well, how do you do that? Well. It, you, there's no uh, gas latch or, or gas tank latch like there is in an American car, or I should say in a regular gasoline powered car. But right on the screen here, this is where you do everything. All of your controls for the car are electronic and on the screen. So it says open charge port. So you push that and it opens. Then it says unlock charge port. So you push that and now the charge port is open and unlocked and ready to accept the charge. The rear of the car, you see the charge port is now open and the, con the connection for charging is visible from the inside of the car. And the T light next to it shows blue. Nice. There's several types of charges on it for different types of cars. There's a multiple unit of cars. We're going to pick the one that tests the charging station. This is a commercial Joule charging station. Uh, when you go to a Tesla charging station, you plug it in and the bill goes directly to Hertz, who's the owner of the car. Uh, if I owned the car myself and I went to a Tesla charging station, the bill would go directly to me and to whatever credit arrangement I've made with them, it'll be paid instantly to Elon Musk. And you probably have heard that uh, both Ford and General Motors are going to adopt the Tesla charging system. So you'd be charging your vehicle at a uh, Tesla charge point. 
And just as an interesting aside, uh, coming across the Alligator Alley yesterday from Miami, uh, my vehicle went down to less than half charged. So I stopped at a place to have a, a snack in the mid Midway area, Minnesota Indian uh, Reservation. And I, while I was having, I saw a Tesla charging facility. Plugged my Tesla in, went in, had a hamburger, had a cup of coffee, and then checked the charging status of my car. I said, well, I wonder if my car is charged. Now I installed the Tesla app on my phone, which I recommend you do, because then your phone becomes your electronic key as well to enter the car. And I checked the app on the car, on the phone, and found that the Tesla was fully 100% charged. I didn't have to go out the 100 yards away from the restaurant to check on my Tesla. Very interesting features. I would describe driving a Tesla compared to driving a, a former, a regular car. My, my regular car is a, uh, a, a Camry Prius hybrid. It's night and day. It's like, it's like having a 1980s flip phone versus a brand new iPhone 15. The difference is just totally remarkable. All right, let's take a look at the connection.